we have Reto with us. Um, as you all know, s detecting SQL injection is more than just looking for a single quote, and I think you did lots of research about what is more than just a single quote, how can I find it? So, yeah, thanks for being with us. Good luck. So, thank you very much. Uh, the topic is an alternative approach for real-life SQL injection detection. My name is uh, Rito Ishii, I'm from Switzerland. Uh, I'm the lead security engineer and the developer of the web application firewall Airlock. The content of this presentation is uh, SQL injection is not yet boring. Then I will say something regarding false positive or real life SQL injection detection. <laughs> then we will present you uh, one of the classical approach uh, to filter SQL injection. And uh, the main part will be uh, Lib injection, which is a library for uh, SQL detection uh, through lexical analysis. Um, who of you already heard of lib injection? Okay, so I will uh, recap the concept. So um, at the end I will show you a new approach uh, based on lexical analysis to uh, reduce false positives. And when we have enough time, i show you a short prototype demo. So SQL injection is not yet boring, as you can see on these pictures. Uh, people are very, uh, very creative uh, where you could use SQL injection, for example, to uh, compromise road pricing systems. Nevertheless, also for a web application, uh, it's still one of the major threats, as you are al already seen on the previous uh, presentation. So uh, in OWASP top 10, it uh, belongs to the first uh, or the category with the highest risk, uh, injection. And uh, yeah, almost in any statistics uh, you find in the internet, uh, it has most of the, at almost uh, the highest uh, risk rate. So coming to real life SQL injection detection. So is uh, SQL injection blocking hard? Definitely not. It's very easy. You can block everything, then you block all SQL injection. So it's quite obvious that you can't use uh, such an approach. Uh, your application is no longer uh, accessible. Um, nevertheless, when you want to do it a bit better, say, let's block all terms, all symbols, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, even this can sometimes be um, circumvented. Uh, there are a lot of obfuscation techniques like uh, different encodings you can use, uh, multiple encodings, and so on. Uh, when you are interested in these obf uh, obfuscation techniques, I can recommend the presentation from Roberto Saldago uh, a few weeks ago at, uh, at Black Hat USA. <coughs> So classical uh, good blacklist rules tend to be very complex because they have to consider false positive, what we will see in the next uh, slides. So unfortunately, um, this is an unsolvable decision problem. So you can't decide correctly in all cases whether it is SQL injection or not when you don't have additional information, what's uh, usually the case uh, for web application firewalls. So Additional information means you don't know the statement, you know, no, don't know where the injection can appear, maybe you even don't know which uh, database management system the application is using. So when you have very strict rules, uh, which is quite easy to create strict rules, then you need an extensive uh, exception handling. And based on this uh, exception handling, you have, it's possible that your overall security of the application is even worse than when you have less strict rules because most the, uh, of the arguments are maybe whitelisted. So consider, for example, this example here, <coughs> uh, uh, easy uh, select statement where you could uh, inject uh, here into the bas password field in a single quote context. All these uh, 10 variants are, uh, can be used to bypass this password check. So do you really want to block all these uh, strings here? So maybe you say, OK, yeah, let's block it. Let's block a quote, operate a quote. You can do that. Maybe you end up in uh, a lot of false positives. When it comes to a non-quote context, like here, when you compare an um, integer, that's in, then it's even worse. So you can no longer um, search for any quotes. So basically, when you want to block that, you have to block the word or, or um, yeah, the symbol. <coughs> so the classical approach to filter SQL injection, that's basically what we do, actually. So we have moderate complex uh, regular expression. We categorize these uh, expressions according to the attack types, and in these uh, several categories, we consider different database management systems. For example, how do the command symbol look like in these databases, and so on. One example, uh, extending the query result with a union select. So again, the red part is the injection. 
An obvious trivial filter would be your block select. Unfortunately, this causes a lot of false positive. So now you have to add additional con uh, conditions. That's a very dangerous. Maybe an attacker find a way to uh, use this condition uh, to circumvent the filter. Uh, nevertheless, uh, as you see, the expression gets uh, much more complicated, and even this one can be circumvented, for example, uh, with different code uh, um, spaces which are not matched by backslash s, this PCRE. So let's recap uh, libinjection. Libinjection is a library for uh, uh, SQL injection detection through lexical analysis. Uh, there's a available in uh, C++ and uh, Python implementation. It's on GitHub, it's open source. The author is uh, Nick Galbraith, and uh, we have seen him, or the library, 2012, first time at Black Hat USA. So live injection considers three different contexts uh, where injection could happen. In the first context, uh, you don't have any quotes around uh, your injection string on the application side. In the second context, you have single quotes, and in the third context, you have double quotes on the web application side. So uh, it's a lexical analysis parser. So, uh, it basically creates a token representation of your input strings. Uh, that's an older version of libinjection. Uh, that's the set of uh, tokens which is, uh, was used there. So you have keywords, logical operators, numbers, uh, uh, functions, uh, braces, and so on. So now, um, how does the tokenizer work? Um, basically, you have three times here the same injection. And depending on the context uh, where this injection happens, you have now a completely different representation uh, of this token string. So in the first example, everything up to admin is a string, admin is a name, and then again, again we have the start of a string. So here, um, you terminate the quote on the application side. So the everything or the, the string starts with a uh, union, which is a special key. Then you have uh, select, which uh, is a standard key, star is operator, and so on. And in the third context, you don't have any uh, double quotes in your injection string, so everything is a string. So libinjection has some nice features. For example, uh, it folds numbers. So uh, independent of the representation of a number, uh, it ends up in the token one. Strings uh, with quotes around it uh, are folded to the token S. Simple arithmetic expressions are uh, folded uh, to the representation or to the token one. So they are not evaluated, they are only folded. And uh, comments are removed and so on. There are a lot of features in this parser. So how does now the decision work whether a uh, user input is SQL injection or not? Um, Live injection has a set of fingerprints, and these fingerprints have a length up to five. And that's a quite interesting thing. So Live injection compares only the first five tokens of your input strings. And according to Nick, um, that's enough to decide whether it's SQL injection or not. If this is true, if this is secure, that's really cool because that's unbelievable fast. You only have to parse the first uh, uh, five tokens and uh, you have a quite small list of fingerprints which you can sort, binary search, and so on. So this fingerprint list is, uh, as I heard, uh, basically learned or generated from a large list of SQL injection uh, pattern. So coming to the weaknesses of libinjection. So basically, that's my personal opinion here. Uh, I know there are already a few uh, web application firewalls using this uh, um, library. So one problem with lib injection, I thought, is uh, this five token limitation. Can it be bypassed? And yes, it can. So for example, um, you add some padding string like this one here, one XOR one, XOR one, and so on. And uh, with this padding string, uh, string you can ba basically hide your real attack. And the real attack in this case here is the command symbol. So it could also be a semicolon where you start a new command and so on. Um, there is also injection possible uh, when you are in a quoted context uh, where you, for example, can use the concatenation symbol to uh, circumvent uh, your attack. <coughs> so uh, on Monday I sent this presentation to Nick and said uh, on these slides there are a few issues. And uh, on Wednesday you uh, give me feedback and say that uh, everything is solved. Uh, you um, took a look at the old version, the newest one is uh, fine regarding this. So um, I took a look at the newest version and uh, he increased the number of fingerprints from uh, 2000 to 9000. 
and uh, now he folds these operators here. So uh, the whole um, one, uh, the XOR one and so on is folded to the token one. And with this, uh, he fixed this problem. So, but basically I think that's more of a conceptual problem. Is it really possible to uh, fold and uh, whitelist all possible combination such that this padding attack is no longer possible? So that was on Wednesday. Uh, so in the plane from Zurich to uh, Hamburg, I wrote a small fuzzer. And that's basically this one here in Python. Uh, it has a list of tokens and it, it creates all possible combination up to the length 5, so basically cross product of this list. And um, then um, I whitelist all the uh, token combination which make no sense, for example, to uh, consecutive operators and so on. Um, that's not possible in SQL injection. So I stripped them out, then I checked whether it's uh, or I generated a, a SQL. Uh, statement with uh, these uh, token representations and I checked with uh, MySQL whether it is valid uh, SQL and uh, at the end checked whether live injection blocks and that was the result here so it takes 15 sec seconds I think So, with all these strings, you can now uh, pad your attack. So you can basically, um, you see here the command symbol at the end that w was, would be one uh, possible uh, attack to uh, remove certain conditions. But you can also start a new command, maybe doing a union select after this padding. So we have over 350 uh, combinations uh, how to circumvent this uh, filter. I will send this list to Nick and uh, I think he will um, add all these tokens. But uh, I'm not sure if... Uh, you can really fold or uh, block everything without increasing uh, the false positive rate uh, um, significantly. So one other problem with uh, lexical analysis you have is uh, you re reduce the scope to a smaller or to a smaller domain. So uh, basically, you generate uh, such a token representation, and uh, it's possible that the false positive uh, can end up in the same token representation at the end. So, but this can be quite easily fixed. So, for example, you don't have to consider um, select and from in the same way. You can say one token is a bit special. It's a starting quo uh, token. The other maybe depend on it uh, on, on the first token and so on. So you add new tokens. And with this, you can basically reduce uh, the false positive. I think uh, Nick already did such uh, optimizations to reduce false positives. So live injection is a really cool approach to uh, detect SQL injection. But basically, uh, we thought that uh, for us, it's not the right approach um, regarding this fingerprint list. So uh, the parser is cool. We can reuse it. But we re replace the fingerprint list with uh, the classical approach, meaning uh, making dete uh, patent detection. So what we do is now we tokenize the full string. Uh, and we make some pattern matching on this uh, string. So no, you can no longer await the filter by padding because we search in the whole uh, uh, tokenized representation. And what we also don't want to do, we don't want to generate the fingerprint uh, list or a, a list. Um, we want to use human brain power as we did before. So we want to think of how does a SQL injection look like, with, what's the structure, and so on. So we don't want to generate these blacklist uh, rules. So maybe you can th think of, uh, is this more expensive regarding computational effort? Yes, it's definitely. So you have to tokenize the full string now. You can do this lockup. But one benefit you get from this, which, ha which has also a huge influence to the performance, and that's you get much simpler regular expressions. So for example, there are dozens of variants how you can separate uh, terms. Uh, between each other. So we can use tabs, uh, spaces, carriage return, and so on. Um, even null bytes can be sometimes used uh, to separate tokens. That's quite uh, crazy. And uh, you consider all these in your parson, parson and has a, um, you don't no, no longer have to consider it in your regular expression. 
So uh, one other uh, benefit you get regarding simple patterns is that you don't have these long disjunction chains uh, saying is it select, is it update, is it insert. So basically everything is a keyword or a starting keyword. Yeah. So one example here, you have this classical uh, regex and uh, the token uh, representation gets uh, much shorter and simpler. So we tested this new approach and we found out that the detection rate was better than uh, our current regular expression, but unfortunately we had more false positive. So we thought, how could we uh, reduce the false positives? And this is now a new approach, so we think of uh, which token combination are not common in SQL. So for example, two names consecutive one, or a number followed by a name, or two numbers, uh, two operators, sorry. There are a lot uh, more examples. So why, for example, are two consecutive names not common in SQL? So um, when you have uh, such an uh, update uh, statement, uh, you see when you um, detect or when you parse all the keywords, you no longer have two consecutive uh, black names here. You also, the parser also considers strings, it considers uh, comments, everything uh, um, regarding this helps you um, yeah, that this approach is possible. So one example, here you are in a single quote context, you have the example dancing like a robot on fire. So dancing is a string uh, because it uh, ends with a quote and like is an operator and followed by two consecutive names. And now you know that's not SQL injection because that's not possible in a valid uh, query. So unfortunately, you have to implement some whitelisting step. There are a few exceptions regarding this um, consecutive name example. There are maybe no exception regarding uh, consecutive operators and so on. For example, um, when you have uh, column or table ali aliases without the as keyword in it, which uh, most uh, database uh, management systems support, um, then you have to whitelist and consider this uh, in your, um, or you have to define an exception and consider this in your uh, whitelist. So here are two examples, uh, select IDI, I is uh, an uh, alias of ID and without the ASK word. But there are not that many uh, exceptions I think you have to define. So what's the benefit of this approach? Basically you have now simple regular expression to block um, your um, input um, strings when it's SQL injection. Um, so simple means also there could be quite uh, quite uh, aggressive, quite strong. And now you have also simple regex to uh, whitelist the false positives. So one, uh, one thing we have, uh, or may, you may ask is, can we somehow evade this filter with, uh, or use this whitelisting step um, to evade the filter? And actually, I haven't found any way to do that. Um, maybe you have an idea, then you can send me. So this is the overall process. I don't want to go through. I don't have the time. You can check it offline if you want. So coming to the prototype demo. So it's not a big thing. Basically everything is based on lib injection. So as I said, you have a blacklist. Say for example, I want to block all strings followed by any um, character followed by a logical operator. So take one example here from the presentation. Close it. Okay, sorry. Don't know why it isn't working, strange. Okay. I hope it's the whole string. Yeah, you see it is blocked. Um, you have here a string followed by a logical operator. Now I can define my whitelist uh, regular expression. So say two consecutive names uh, should not be blocked. Here you have to consider uh, these special uh, exceptions regarding uh, where you are in a from and uh, 
select and from statement or update and from and so on. So again, now you see it's not blocked. So you see these three contexts in the as is context, that's the token representation it, where it would be blocked. This is the uh, single quote context and that's the double quote context. And uh, in this context where the string would be blocked, it's now whitelisted because it's not valid uh, SQL injection. So what are the conclusion? Real life SQL injection without additional information is uh, really hard. And uh, you want to get rid of false positives. False positives are a pain. Uh, security experts often tend to only take a look at, uh, at the detection rate, the true positives, not really false positives. And as I said, it's completely useless uh, filter which block too much. So lexical analysis can uh, be used to uh, blacklist, uh, uh, to simplify uh, blacklist rules, can also be used to uh, reduce false positives, as you have seen, and it's definitely worth for further uh, research. So maybe you can think of autocode injection attacks where lexical analysis uh, may be sensible, then let me know. So I want to say thanks to uh, Erwin uh, Huber, which makes uh, this project uh, basically um, possible, and to Thomas Lommel for his support. And yeah, if you have any feedback, suggestions, welcome, send me a mail, visit our homepage. So Basically, we are not marketing guys, so uh, the homepage doesn't look that nice, but yeah, you find the information you want. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Rito. Are there any questions? <laughs> okay, you've been like at the very same second. Hi, hello. Hi. Uh, my question is, uh, do you have some testing page, like libinjection has a good testing page, where anybody can try it out? This all looks to me like it's not in that phase, like it's libinjection. That's correct. It's basically a research project, so we I have implemented this prototype, as you see before, it's a command line tool. Um, yeah, basically the it's possible to extend this uh, or to, to create a web page, but what I want to present you is a new approach uh, how you could do that. It's not, not a fixed uh, implementation, so we haven't yet decided whether we make an open source project or implement it in our rough. So, uh, yeah, the value of I this mean, presentation it's, it's should be uh, the concept and not the current uh, concrete It's not fair to the NIC if you don't have the testing page where everybody can uh, can can get his uh, hands dirty. Yeah. And in your case, it's just, it's like lip ejection is not okay. We are doing the better approach. So it will be fair toward the Nick to to have the testing page where we could try it out. Yeah, that's correct. When you have a testing page, when you really consider both, also false positive. When you have a testing page considering only true positive, uh, that's easy. I can set up uh, one in a few minutes where uh, everything is blocked, as I said. But uh, yeah, you're right. When you test both, that would make sense. So, but as I said, uh, that's a com or what I want to present you is the concept here, and uh, I don't have a tool yet. So uh, it's not this um, at the moment. It's not okay. this decided how, how we want. Uh, proceed with okay, this approach. Uh, you told that uh, it will be easy to create the white list. So do you think that uh, something like uh, good set, uh, good white list, uh, which could cover mostly uh, everything uh, should be a result of uh, this research? So basically it's uh, not easy to set up a whitelist or yeah, this is uh, maybe easy to set up a whitelist but as I said is, uh, it's easy to make blacklists which blocks everything. So regarding whitelisting, uh, yeah the whitelisting may be good, they may be very application specific but unfortunately certain fields you cannot really whitelist because uh, all the possible characters you use in a SQL injection uh, must be whitelisted. For example, when you search fields or things like that, there are a lot of form fields where you need uh, that open whitelist. Uh, um, so whitelist is not only uh, always the right approach to uh, to blocks uh, SQL injection. Uh, 
or it's not always uh, possible. Any other questions? Nobody? Okay, well, thanks, Reto. Thanks, thanks a lot.